Today I'm going to show you how to make medieval buttonholes. This is a lightweight wool and it will give you a good idea how to do it in uh, most fabrics. Uh, so I'm using 30, 80, 50 over 30 linen thread and I have a chisel that I'm going to use to cut my buttonholes. And I have a thimble which is my preference when sewing but I appreciate that not everybody needs one and uh, beeswax to wax my thread. I wouldn't use it on a wool and then fray check to seal my buttonholes after as I make them. You can see I've marked my buttonhole spaces with needles at the desired width, usually about one inch or one inch and a quarter apart. Now I'm cutting with my chisel using my finger as a guide, careful not to cut your finger, and make sure you don't go too close to the edge of the fabric because you can actually um, cut through your stitches. Um, Every time I push the chisel into the fabric, I make sure I've gone all the way through by just like gently lifting. Um, and I'm about an eighth inch from the edge. Uh, chisels are really great for cutting buttonholes. They give you a much cleaner cut. If I wanted a wider buttonhole than I can get with this chisel, I would just use the edge of the chisel to cut it a little bit wider. Now I'm going to seal them with fray check. Um, I, I use the fray check on both sides. If you want a more authentic uh, solution than fray check, you can use melted beeswax and just paint it on. Uh, the fray check is really convenient, so that's what I use usually unless I'm doing something especially historical. Uh, there's also something called fray stop that functions the same way. It will also help your buttonhole last a long time. It just uh, helps with durability and it keeps your fabric from fraying. You won't need this with a super heavy wool. This is just for like linens and lighter wools that, and silks that might fray. See, I'm doubling my thread here, which with a cruel wool, I wouldn't do, but with a silk, or in this case, a light linen thread, which is what I'm using, I will double it to get a thicker stitch as I go. I'm waxing it quite a lot to keep it from uh, raveling or getting caught and to keep it quite strong as I sew. Um, you will have a trouble with your threads tangling if you don't wax. So I'm going to sew across underneath. I'm sewing between the two layers of fabric. This is cuff is lined. Um, and that means that I've kind of secured it. And I'm going to be sewing over that piece of thread as I go back along the buttonhole. Every time I sew, I go in through the loop that I just made and I'm making sure I'm not splitting the two threads. I'm treating the two threads, the double threads, as a single unit. Um, and as I sew through, I'm sewing up towards the slit of the buttonhole and I'm making sure that I'm not catching any fabric at the top, at the other side of the buttonhole. And I'm using my finger in the back as a guide to make sure that I've gone through all the layers of my fabric. This is like a very efficient way to make the buttonhole because I know exactly where my stitches have to go each time. As I get closer and I've stabilized, I can sew, I can cut off the end of my thread. So I've actually sped up this footage so you can see it going. As I get to the corner, I'm just going to go right up to the corner and then change my orientation and carry on doing the same thing from the other side. The first stitch might be a bit awkward but it won't really show up. You just want to keep doing the same method. I'll often go back once if I'm worried about stabilization. And now I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. So I'm putting my thread in about an eighth of an inch below the slit. And then I am making sure that my needle goes through the loop of the thread to create the little buttonhole stitch. You can see I'm just um, flattening it out as I go. The linen thread will really um, crunch a bit if you're not careful. Now I'm just going back and forth twice when I get to the end to make it extra secure. And then I'm going to sew my thread back underneath the buttonhole and cut it and that'll be Every time I do a buttonhole, I measure my thread by pulling it to just past the crook of my elbow. And using that method, I can get a sense of whether 
the piece of thread is long enough and that it's going to be the same uh, length every time because it's very annoying to change your thread out in the middle of a buttonhole. I mean, you can do it, but it's better if you don't have to. So that way I can, after I do one buttonhole using my just past the crook of my elbow as a gauge, I can say, okay, I needed it like a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, and then I can get it right consistently on the following buttonholes. Um, of course, that will vary depending on the length of your arm, but it's a good gauge to use as a, as a marker. You can see I'm testing as I go periodically to make sure I haven't caught the other side of the buttonhole and then make sure the buttonhole like goes all the way through all the fabric so it's actually a slit and not a mess. Um, these take a while to get good at, so I recommend practicing on um, something scrap fabric before you put them on your actual garment. And I also recommend practicing, if you're using a fabric you haven't before, I recommend practicing on that fabric, even if you're pretty good at doing buttonholes in general. When you run out of thread, you can just finish your stitch, if you run out of, your, of thread mid buttonhole, finish your stitch where it is, like sew that piece of thread back in, and then just start another one right beside it, and you can just keep going. And you'll see it a tiny bit, but it's not too bad. You can see I'm just finishing off the edge again. You can adjust if you want like a slightly longer buttonhole from the slit, you can uh, make your stitch length a bit longer. Um, the maximum I would go is probably about eh, five centimeters, give or take. Sorry, I switched between imperial and metric. Five centimeters would be, you know, over an eighth of an inch, um, something like that. So I'm just showing you the back. Um, sometimes you'll find, for whatever reason, that you didn't get all of the layers of the buttonhole um, stabilize of the fabric and so you should always check the back of your piece and then what I'm doing is just whip stitching through that area to make sure that the actual fabric of the lining is completely secure so that's just a troubleshooting method I use if something goes wrong now I'm just going to show you the same technique but in this case I'm using linen two layers of linen is the fabric and uh, cruel wool is my thread the one thing that's different about cruel wool, I do find the look a little bit nicer than the linen, but the other thing that's different is that it will have a twist, so it will have a Z or S twist, and I recommend figuring out where that twist is, and then if you think about your buttonhole as a circle, I recommend going in the same direction as the twist, so if you think of your buttonhole as like going clockwise or counterclockwise around the the buttonhole, you should go the same direction of the twist, so you're continuously retwisting the thread as opposed to untwisting the thread as you go. Um, this will just help keep your thread stable and it'll look a little bit nicer. You may have to take the thread out and like let it untwist a little bit from time to time. Not take the thread out, but like stop doing your buttonhole and let the thread unwind a bit, but you'll get a much better result than if you twist it in the opposite direction from the twist of the thread because then it will sort of just unwind and get messy as you go. Otherwise, the technique is uh, very similar, and I actually find cruel wool to be a little bit more fun. You can also use silk thread. Uh, silk thread is definitely a little more finicky, but it looks very pretty and shiny. Uh, when you're doing silk thread, make sure to very, very carefully secure the ends of your thread, because it will tend to kind of unwind over time, because it's uh, slippery and not sticky like wool. I don't wax my silk thread because it dulls the color for buttonholes, but uh, that's a personal preference choice. Anyway, I hope this was informative. Let me know if you have any questions.